Hello, this is Guillermo Puyol with MobileProgrammingTips.com and today we're going to start a basic platformer game using Corona SDK with the Lua Glider IDE. So the first step to creating this basic platformer is going to create a new physics project. So we're going to go to File, New Project and here you have the, a blank project or physics project. The physics project is going to go ahead and load the storyboard for you and it will also set up physics with with two objects that will have bodies already present. So let's go ahead and say name the project basic platformer And what, what's happening right now is that Lua Glider is creating our, our project. And we have all of the assets already. We have a couple images. And these are this is the default physics project that comes with Corona SDK. If we were to play it right now, you'll notice we have a ground object with some grass. And we're going to have a crate falling uh, from the sky and, and colliding with the, with the grass. So this is the standard physics project from Corona SDK. Okay, and here we go. There's our crate, it's responding to physics and it's falling off the world. So that's the basic physics project. So let's go ahead and stop that right now. So the first thing we're going to do to change this project is make it a landscape style game. So we go to the build settings file and we change the default to landscape and support it. We're going to support only landscape. And Corona was nice enough to set it up so that whenever we make this change, it still looks looks good in the in the example so everything rearranges itself and again we have a crate and it falls off the sky so what we're going to do next is we're going to eliminate some of these objects that were already created and we're going to do that right here in the level one file. Level one file is basically the, the level that the file that holds all your level information in this project. So they have set up uh, main.lua which loads up uh, loads up the menu with the start button and once you click the start button you go to level one. So that's what's happening right now. And as you notice in the level we're basically using storyboard creating a new scene and immediately after that we're loading the physics engine starting it and then pausing it and the reason why we pause it is that later on whenever we go into the inner scene we're going to start physics okay so we're just loading it and getting it ready for whenever we we go into the scene so most of the stuff is happening in the create scene. Here's where the background is, is getting loaded. Uh, here's where the the crate is, is being loaded as well. We are adding a physics body to the crate. We're loading the, the grass object, setting the reference point, positioning it, and then um, we're adding the, the physics object to it. Okay, so that's basically what's happening right now. And what I want to do is change this to a basic rectangle. I'm not going to use the crate. For now, our our hero, quote unquote, is going to be a, a rectangle. So let's go ahead and take this, this crate going to create the hero and we're going to call it local hero and we're gonna do 
a rectangle and let's make it right about 64 by 96 we'll try that okay now we're, we don't want the hero rotated in fact we'll eventually set it to have fixed rotation and we want the hero a little bit lower so let's go ahead and set it up to be at let's start with 60 okay so now that we have our hero defined we're going to go ahead and give the hero a physics body and we're going to start out with this with, with these arguments here but uh, we can always change those later okay and the last thing that we need to do is take this hero object and insert it into the group into the display group okay so let's go ahead and try that and while I try that I'm going to go ahead and load my trusty Corona uh, API documentation it's always a good idea to have those handy so whenever you're not sure about the syntax uh, the arguments that a function call uh, re takes you can use those so let's take a look over here oh okay the Let's take a look at the at the arguments here. So it's saying that there's an, an error on our line 36 here. And let's take a look. So let's go ahead and search the API for for the proper arguments to pass. The rectangle okay so we go to your rect and it's asking for okay so it's asking for the for the position within the declaration okay so the position is going to be 160 comma 60 and the size is going to be 64 and 96 so we don't need to do this here so we have our game here and there is our hero okay so now what we need to do is set up the controls so that we can move our hero left and right and make it jump and so on so the first thing I want to do is create a set of buttons here so we're going to have the classic uh, NES style controller where you have a button on, on the right hand side that makes it jump and on the left you have the the control pad where you can move left and right okay so let's go ahead and, and do that we're going to add that to the scene so let's go ahead and create another rectangle and this is going to be very very simplistic uh, as you'll see we're just going to have basic basic shapes so let's go ahead and call it local controls okay so we're creating another rectangle and this one is going to be very close to the bottom so let's call that mm, 
we're going to say 50, comma, 290, comma, 96 by 32 okay all right so let's go ahead and add that those controls on top of the grass controls okay And we're also going to create a jump button and this is going to be a circle. And the near circle takes this argument. Let's take a look. X, Y, and radius. So the X, let's go ahead and make that 470, 475. Y, let's go ahead and make that 290. And the radius, let's make that 16. And we can try that. So let's see how that looks. Okay, well, we need to tweak the positioning, but we have our basic control starting to take shape. So we need to raise this one up a bit and um, scoot it to the left so we're gonna do that controls we're going to do this at 30 and raise it up to 280 And this is far, too far to the to the right. So let's go ahead and call that to 455. That should look a little bit better. Okay, this one needs to be a little bit higher up and a little bit more to the left okay and what we're going to do now is add some touch touch controls to each one of those so we're going to make it so that they respond to touch events so we're going to say controls colon add event listener they're listening for a touch event okay so we're going to do to make a function function that says do controls touch okay so that's all we're doing there and over here we're doing the same thing button jump colon add event listener again is listening for a touch event and is going to do do controls touch okay we haven't defined this do controls touch function so that's what we're going to do now and let's go ahead and do that here so local function do controls touch and it's going to receive an event 
and let's say if event.face equals began then and if event.face equals ended then so we're going to do that right now and for now it's not recognizing which button got touched so let's go ahead and say print button is down and then here we're going to say button is up just to make sure that it's reading our buttons correctly but for now like I mentioned either button is going to do exactly the same thing alrighty so if you look at the console here at the bottom and let's bring this closer I hold my mouse down and it says button is down I let it go and it says button is up same over here hold it down let go button is up okay so now our buttons are responding they're absolutely useless but we have buttons that are responding so let's make it so that we recognize which button got got pressed so what we're going to do now is call them something here so let's let's say controls dot id equals left right And then button jump dot id equals jump. So now we we have an id that identifies the the object that's that's triggering this event. So here we can we can say if event dot target meaning the the or let's let's localize that all right so local button pressed equals event dot target so that means that the button pressed is going to get stored there and then we say if button pressed dot id equals jump then we're going to say button jump is down if not, that's not it then we say controls or let's say control pad is down and we're going to do the same thing over here Uh, it's up and up all right so let's see if that works so we're trying to determine which button got got pressed now of course right now we have no way of knowing if the user wants to go left or right because this is just one control but here if we take a look at the console at the bottom we're going to say control pad is down control pad is up jump is down jump is up so now we have distinct controls here and it's time that we start manipulating our our hero so what we're going to do is let's go ahead and make the hero jump first so instead of having this hero here declared as a local where we cannot do anything with it we're going to declare in our forward declarations forward declarations means that we know we're going to be using something later on in the game and we want it to be accessible in different sections so 
we're declaring this local hero as a empty variable we later add the display object into it and now we can access it from this function here so let's go ahead and say over here that whenever the button is pressed press we're going to apply an impulse to the hero so let's go ahead let's go ahead and say hero colon apply linear impulse and this is going to need a direction so it's going to be zero in the x and it has to be negative in the y so because negative means up positive means down it's a little bit different in computers but the zero zero is here on the top left of the screen and then it goes down uh, it's positive uh, down and it's positive to the right so that linear impulse and we also need to tell it from where so we're going to say uh, from the hero dot x come on hero dot y so it's going to be at the center of the object and it's going to be an impulse upwards so let's go ahead and try that now this hundred value may be too high maybe too low so the best way is to just try things out and see how it feels and make sure that it has the feel that, that you're going for alrighty so let's try it out and I hit it and it's far too high so let's call this 20 let's try it again Okay, that's a little bit better, it may be too low. 19.8 I believe is the value of gravity, so we just need to offset gravity by a little bit with that impulse. Actually, 9.8 meters per second squared is, is gravity. Okay, that's feeling a little bit better. All right, I'm gonna settle for 40. And now, what we're going to do is make our hero move right and left. But the only way that we can do that is, oh, before we move on, I wanna show, show you something here. Now we haven't checked for whether the hero is grounded or not. So I'm going to press and keep pressing the jump. So we can actually keep jumping even if we're not touching the ground. So that's going to be something that we're going to address later on. Because normally in platformer games you don't allow multiple jumps. Obviously it depends on your gameplay but that is usually not the not the behavior maybe in some cases you allow a double jump and that's the most you can do but it's up to you but you do need to control whether the hero is grounded or not and we can do that later on with with collisions whenever the the object has collided with the ground we're going to set a flag called is grounded and only we're only going to let it jump whenever the object is in fact grounded so just keep that in mind for a little bit later on but right now what I want to do is set up the control pad for left and right so what we want to do over here is set the the control pad local touch x is equal to event.x and then we're going to go ahead and say print touched touched and then we're going to say touch X and the reason for that is that I want to show you that we can con 
determine whether they want to go the player want to go wants to go left or wants to go right depending on where they are touching that that control pad so when I go here we're touching it at 32 okay so 20 remember it, the left is 20 the right is 120 okay so we can assume that if they touch this this control from 20 to 70 then they want to go left if they touch it from from 70 to 120 they want to go right so we we can then say if touch X is less than 70 then move right else I'm sorry move left else move right so in order to make it move left we're going to set the velocity of the object so the way we set the velocity is we set linear velocity so we're looking to set linear velocity and again it just needs an x velocity and a y velocity so let's try this hero colon set linear velocity and let's call this hero dot velocity and then this for now this is going to be zero we're gonna to have to change that later on and then this since we're going left is going to be negative and then we, we can do the same thing for the right and it's going to be positive here now we haven't defined hero dot velocity but I want to make that a property of the hero itself that we can later manipulate so let's let's start setting up some hero properties here and let's say hero dot velocity is equal to 50 okay so now when we go here this velocity with a lowercase and capitalization does matter so keep an eye on that so when I play here if we press on the left it's going to set up a negative 50 velocity if I press on the right it should set a positive 50 this number 22 I have a problem oh okay the problem here is that I had set up here as a variable not yet as a table so what, what we can do is just do that and then Lua knows that here is going to be a table that stores many of many values so now it will take this because here this means that one of the values inside a table and the table name is hero so that's what ca caused that problem here was just a variable not a table okay so let's try this out it's telling me that 
velocity is nil, or 48. That I'm not sure why. Let's go ahead and, and create a little function here. Local set hero properties. Okay. Local function set hero properties. And over here, we're going to do this. So now, whenever we create this hero down here, we call set hero properties. Let's try that. Okay, so that works. I'm going right. Now, as you notice, the friction is making the, the hero stop. And even though I'm pressing down, that line is only getting executed one time. So the, the reason for that is, if we look at the control touch over here, it says when when the when began when the, the touch began then go ahead and do this okay so it executes it sets the, the linear velocity to to the right velocity however it it doesn't um, it doesn't account for friction and it just it doesn't control whether whether the button continues to be pressed or not. So what we can do is add uh, an inner frame and every on every frame the velocity gets gets set again. So let's do exactly that over here under hero where hero gets defined let's say runtime add event this listener enter frame and then set hero velocity okay so what's going what this means is that every time uh, a new frame is generated so uh, typically about 60 times per second this set hero velocity is going to get executed. So what we're going to do is create a function, local function, set hero velocity, and we're going to do this line here okay so we're going to say hero dot set linear velocity to hero dot velocity and now instead of doing this here we're going to change the value of that velocity so we're going to say hero dot velocity is equal to negative uh, well actually to hero dot well, we can do it, negative 50 Let's see we can do that for now Okay, I have an idea. Hero dot speed. Okay. Uh, 
All right. So over here in the set hero properties, we're going to have this called speed. Speed is going to be 50 regardless of the direction. The velocity has a direction to it. So if if they're touching on the left, velocity is going to be negative speed. If they're touching on the right, it's going to be a positive speed. And then every sec, every over 60 times per second, that linear velocity is going to be determined. Now, what I and this is going to partially work, but we still need to remove that event listener if the button is not pressed, because right now it's going to be start moving right away even if the button is not pressed I'm not pressing the button okay so what we can do is just have that runtime the enter frame get called just when the button gets pressed and it we remove that event listener when the button is up so let's try that Okay, so I'm pressing the button, I let go, and it slows down to stop. I press the button, I let go, stop, it slows down to stop. So that is exactly what we need there. And then we can make it jump. Now, this is the, the, the problem with the way we have the function set up because we had set up zero so I'm trying to make it jump and it won't jump anymore because if you notice here where we set the velocity we're putting that the vertical velocity is zero so what we need to do is before it says that velocity we're going to say local hero vertical velocity is equal to hero colon Um, let's say hero hero horizontal velocity comma hero vertical velocity and then we say hero get linear velocity so what happens here is that this get linear velocity returns two variables an x and a y and we are assigning them to horizontal velocity and vertical velocity we don't care about this one we do care about this one and this is what we, we use instead of the of that zero so that we are not zeroing it zeroing out the the vertical velocity that that is there if the, if the hero is jumping So let's try that and now it jumps it's no longer stopping why is it not stopping Oh, okay because we need to everything is working the way it should be but we're not searing out the velocity whenever the bottom is up 
hero velocity should be zero before we remove the random list. Okay, so let's try that. Okay, so I press it, let go, press it, jump. And of course, we're going to have two fingers here to, to be able to do this. Okay, so now we have the beginning of a platformer game. We have a platform, we have a hero, we have touch controls that control the hero left and right. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this tutorial and in the next one we're going to go ahead and start uh, setting up a, a bigger level and controlling the camera so we can continue to move right because right now if we move right it's going to disappear and actually this object, this physics object ends at the edge of the screen so you'll see the hero falling off. Oh, and we have lost our hero. So we'll go ahead and, and fix that and we'll control the camera movement as well. I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, again, this is Guillermo Puyol with mobileprogrammingtips.com. You can subscribe to this channel. You can uh, follow us uh, on, on Facebook as well at facebook.com forward slash mobile programming tips. Take care and I'll see you the next time.